Hey everybody, Ryan here. Let's talk about graphic settings in War Thunder. But first, just to be clear, this video is not focused on maximizing visibility or gaining advantages against other players using low or specific graphic settings. This video is all about quality, fidelity, sharpness, and image stability, and it will also not be budget PC friendly. Anyways, I am constantly asked about how my game looks so good, and the short answer is I use an NVIDIA feature called a DLDSR, which means Deep Learning Dynamic Super Resolution, which is an extension of DSR, which is just Dynamic Super Resolution, with some AI neural network magic stuff on top. And you might be asking yourself, now what in the Sam Hill does that mean there, brother? Well, for another short and simple answer, it's a 3D graphics rendering method called super sampling, where in order to reduce jagged edges on straight objects and increase detail of the overall overall scene, each frame is rendered at a higher resolution than your monitor's base resolution. So if you have a 1080p monitor, the game will be rendered at 1440p or 4K or even higher and smushed down into 1080p using algorithms and stuff I don't understand. And so I personally have a 4K native monitor, which is 3840 by 2160 pixels and use DLDSR to render War Thunder at 5120 by 2880 pixels. This means that my super sampled 4K image is created from an image with 78% more pixel information than regular 4K, which leads to the drastic increase in overall scene detail in my videos, which can even be seen in my live streams at 1440p. And make sure to tune in, by the way, because I'm spading every tank in War Thunder live on this YouTube channel five days a week. Also, for those now wondering about SSAA, which is an option within War Thunder for anti-aliasing, it's less efficient than DLDSR and probably DSR as well, and I don't use it. It's just another method of rendering at a higher resolution than your native resolution. And if that's the best solution for you, go get it, girl. Quick disclaimer so you don't get too excited if this doesn't work for you for these specific reasons. You must run the game in exclusive full screen with DLDSR or set your resolution in Windows on the desktop to the DLDSR resolution to use borderless full screen, both of which have trade-offs and potential issues for your own unique needs and hardware configurations. Still give exclusive full screen with DLDSR a try first though, but please remember that I am not your personal customer support agent. Now, you don't have to have a 4K monitor or a RTX 4090 or 5090 or even an NVIDIA card to benefit from super sampling. So let's get into a few things such as how to enable DLDSR or DSR for non-RTX card owners and apply the resolution in War Thunder. And I'll also mention the AMD alternative and then finally I'll go over the rest of my graphic settings in game and post effects settings as well. So make sure to subscribe and like the video or whatever if any of this helps you. To enable DLDSR and DSR, we open the NVIDIA control panel, which you can do by right clicking on the desktop or by right clicking on the NVIDIA tray icon and opening the NVIDIA control panel. You go to manage 3D settings and in the global settings tab, you look for DSR factors. Expand the selection box. And for DLDSR, if your native resolution is under 4K, depending on your GPU, you should try enabling both 1.78 times DL and 2.25 times and test the performance of the 2.25 times first to see if you can run that one. And if not, just do the 1.78 times. 2.25 times DL is definitely too much at 4K native for my 4080 Super, for example, so I use 1.78 times DL. And for DSR, just scroll down a bit to the legacy scaling section and enable one of these, which can go up to four times your native resolution, which for me would be 8K. <laughs> so yeah, the resolution scaling factor that works best for you is gonna depend on your entire system specs and your native resolution. So pay attention to the scaled resolution here in the parentheses and uh, just enable a bunch of them and see what you can run. The higher, the better, of course. More pixels, more detail. And this can also be done through the NVIDIA app by right-clicking on the tray icon or literally just straight clicking it once 
we're going to the graphics tab on the left to the global settings tab and there it is dsr factors with the same options and selections as before but it also brings us nicely into the next setting which is dsr smoothness which is nested in the nvidia app into the dsr factors option and to put it in monkey terms dsr smoothness of one percent will be more sharpened and 100 percent will be more smoother i have no idea how it works <laughs> i personally use one percent because war thunder is notoriously blurry and in the nvidia control panel it's right there under dsr factors dsr smoothness slider thingy and for the amd users out there all is not lost i have no personal experience with this because i've never had a modern amd card but amd has vsr virtual super resolution as a driver level super sampling option now i have no idea where it is in amd's driver software so that's on you to figure out it should be pretty easy and it says here it supports the rx 5000 6000 and 7000 series this is an equivalent to nvidia's dsr not an equivalent to DLDSR, by the way. And so this moves us nicely on to the next step for any of the three super sampling methods, applying the resolution to War Thunder itself. And to do this, you have to open the War Thunder launcher. If you're on Steam, the easiest way is just to right click on War Thunder, go to manage, and select browse local files. Now you can scroll down a bit or just type in launch and you'll find it and just open launcher.exe. Now, if you think the file explorer is scary, the cleanest way to open the launcher is to right click on War Thunder in the library, go to properties, and here you will find the launch options and change this to ask when starting game. Close that window and click play on War Thunder. You will then be greeted with this pop-up window where you will select launch manual game update and hit play again. This is how you get to the launcher through the Steam UI. Now, when you open the launcher, no matter which way you get to it, it will check your game files for updates and might download something. So after that's done, at the top center of the launcher window, there is the resolution selection box. And at the bottom of the list will be your super sampling resolution. So select whichever one you've decided on or whichever one you're testing and make sure to enable exclusive full screen. Or as I mentioned earlier, if you really don't want to run exclusive full screen, you can try setting your display resolution in Windows to the DSR resolution. And then selecting full window in the launcher. Although I do still highly recommend to try native resolution in Windows and DSR exclusive full screen in the game first. Now next, just launch the game through the launcher with the resolution selected to make sure it applies correctly. You never know with Gaijin. And it might take a long time to open occasionally, just let it cook. And also as a quick troubleshooting step, sometimes like if your PC goes to sleep and you wake it up again, the resolution will be really like weirdly stretched. Just alt tab and go back in and everything should be okay. And yes, the screen will go black a lot more often using DLDSR, but the crisp graphics is so worth it in my opinion. The detail. And there you go. Now you're super sampling in War Thunder. And the last little thing for Steam users, if you don't wanna see that launch options box and you just wanna click play and have the game open, just go into the launch options window, select play War Thunder and check always use this option. Now for the rest of my personal graphics settings in the game, every slider maxed out. We got Anisotropy X16, graphics quality is custom, texture quality is high, shadow very high, water very high, water effects quality high, maximum cloud in flight, max cloud on ground, max reflection, very high effects resolution, terrain quality max, SSAO max, tire and track marks very high, cockpit mirror reflections on max, global illumination on high, physics quality max, terrain displacement quality max i will say though if you experience stuttering when you go into an optic like a gunner sight or binoculars try lowering terrain displacement quality to this value or lower but this seems to have been fixed for me tree range maxed particle density maxed grass range maxed small object shadows maxed we got advanced shore heat haze far terrain details on and lens flare off I am still not using ray tracing at all because it seems to just be a game crash roulette still and no motion blur. Although I would love to run a small tasteful amount of motion blur. It has this um, quirky issue with 
missile launch tubes for some reason and uh, bush decorations on other players. It looks great on tracks when you're driving, but is not stable enough. And to round off the settings, I am running DX12. I used to be running DX11, but DX12 seems to be stable enough now. And DX12 might be the reason why I'm able to run terrain displacement quality on max again. I'm not sure. Uh, anyways, for anti-aliasing, even though I am running DLDSR, which many people use as anti-aliasing, I still need a little more pixel stability than that. So I'm running DLAA, which is DLSS native, which uses no upscaling at all. It just applies the DLSS algorithm to the native resolution. And also I am using boost reflex with no FPS cap. Just to show what I'm talking about, this is with zero anti-aliasing at all. And there's still a lot of jagged edges and little flickering pixels all over the place. So with DLSS native back on, the image is basically completely stable and still looks pretty sharp. And speaking of sharpness, here's the post effect settings in game. I have third person sharpness, gunner view, bomber view, and cockpit maxed out, and I'm using a default color correction with polynom tone mapping and here are the values for my tone mapping i really don't know what any of this stuff means but i think it looks good so haha <laughs> and also very importantly the gamma correction value is somewhere in the middle slightly offset to the left i know that's really helpful which leads to the final bit of post effects that i have running on my game now i used to use the nvidia game filters from the nvidia overlay from the nvidia app but i eventually found out I was losing 40 FPS on average from the brightness, contrast, sharpening, and color adjustment that I was using. And with my max FPS being 120 due to using an external capture card and averaging 110 FPS at 5K anyways, I just couldn't cope with that. So I found another way, which is using the in-game post effects I just showed and some NVIDIA control panel adjustments. So in the control panel, we go to adjust desktop color settings. I have plus 2% on brightness, plus 10% on contrast and plus 2% to digital vibrance. I don't know if you can do this on AMD, hope you can, but that's what I'm running. And as you might've seen earlier, I am using the full Ultra HQ client with the Ultra textures and models for ground and aircraft. And also I've been asked many times about how I get my text so small or why my UI looks different. And it is because of DLDSR. The game engine just has a really hard time rendering the UI at the correct scale at 5K because it's just not made for that. It's designed to handle 4K. I gotta say, I love how the UI looks like this. So yeah, there's my video about graphic settings in War Thunder and how to get the best picture quality, not how to be the sweatiest. Hope it helped you, hope you enjoyed it. Do the likey and subscribey thingy if you learned something huge quick thanks to all the people that support me on like patreon discord subscriptions youtube memberships you guys are awesome bye bye i'll see you next time